Minecraft is the highest grossing video game of all time, with YouTube content relating to the game amassing over a trillion views and a very conservative estimate of over 114 million years watched, it's very difficult to overstate the cultural relevance of the game. It has its own merch, conventions, entire TV shows and movies created within the game, people have made one-to-one -one scales of the earth, as well as working computers with working displays. The game is simultaneously a vessel of entertainment, excitement, community, and nostalgia. The game was a pioneer in many aspects. The idea of an early access game, communities of players having a say in future developments, and the sandbox genre of gaming as a whole. All of this in mind, however, this is not a video about the ubiquity or success of the game, but rather the genius in one specific feature of the game, Redstone. Redstone carries power, and acts very similarly to how one might imagine a wire acts in real life. Powered redstone, when connected to an object, activates it. It can make doors open, pistons extend and retract, and can illuminate sources of light. The idea of having power in the game was clearly evident from the beginning of Minecraft's development. As early as 2010, gears were added to the game, which could be placed on walls and could be chained together to transfer kinetic energy from one location to another. Shortly after, however, Minecraft's development team realized that this idea could be expanded to make it into something much more keen. One might argue that the real genius in Redstone is not in the Redstone itself, but in Redstone Torches. You see, redstone torches operate from a simple set of rules. When placed redstone dust, which I will call redstone wire from here on out, is directly adjacent to a redstone torch, that wire becomes powered. If, however, a powered redstone wire goes into a block that is housing a redstone torch, that redstone torch will turn off. Put simply, you can control the presence of power within a redstone circuit by applying power to this component. Sound familiar? Subscribers of my channel already probably know what I'm alluding to. It's the transistor, which is the single most important <coughs> building block upon which the vast majority of modern electronics is built upon. Transistors are crucial to electronics because they allow signals to control other signals. They allow electricity to control itself. Take for example, we have this circuit, where electricity goes from the positive of this battery to the LED and then connects back to ground. What happens if I don't want the LED on all the time? Well, I could add some sort of switch to control the connection, that way I can control the light. While the switch is nice because it allows me to control whether or not I want the circuit to be closed, if every circuit required human intervention to operate, the field of computation would not be a fraction as useful as it is now. Estimates say that electricity travels anywhere from 50% to 99% of the speed of light. And although this is a very wide range, we can safely say that both ends of this range are comically and practically incomprehensibly faster than me. Transistors open and close connections based on whether a voltage is applied to them. They act like a switch, but can be controlled by a signal. Any one transistor could also be the mechanism by which a whole network of transistors activate other signals. While redstone does not have a positive and a negative component to it, the same principle still applies. In fact, with only a tiny number of parts, we can create a Minecraft model of a real transistor, which is just as useful in the game as it is in real life. Herein lies the real genius of the implementation of redstone in Minecraft. While I am well aware that plenty of adults play Minecraft, me being one of them, acquaintance with the concept of redstone allows for young people to relate to electrical engineering in a much more tangible way. Trying to explain to a 10-year-old why transistors are crucial in electronics would ordinarily be a fairly difficult task, but given that most 10-year-olds probably play or have played Minecraft, the task is made much easier by relating it to pistons, redstone torches, and things of that nature. Redstone has two states, powered and unpowered. This allows you to use it just like electricity is used in real life to count in binary. There are various laws that govern the behavior of redstone in different situations, and it only requires a short study of redstone to realize that these laws, which are of no small number, were absolutely put in the game with considerations that allow the emulation of real-life electronic components in Minecraft. This is a button, which is the Minecraft equivalent of a momentary switch in real life. When you punch it, the block that it's attached to will act like a redstone torch, and power redstone wires near it for about a second and a half. This button is attached to a redstone light, and you can see that when I punch the button, the light illuminates briefly and then subsequently turns off. Based on the laws that govern the in-game behavior of redstone, I built this little circuit, which acts like a T-flip-flop does in real life. When a pulse from the button is received on the input, the output of the circuit is changed and held at its new position. In essence, this principle turns a momentary switch into a toggle switch. On many redstone tutorial videos, snarky commenters like to quip, you know, there's an easier T-flip-flop. It's called a lever. Minecraft also has toggle switches in the game. The thing is though, real life has levers too. Here's a real life lever, or a toggle switch, that I use often in my projects. The real usefulness of the T-flip-flop, be it in Minecraft or real life, is not the ability to use a button as a lever, but the ability to allow for a pulse from one circuit to control another. You see, just like the transistor, it's not about a human controlling a connection, it's about a connection controlling a connection, and all of those connections controlling two or three connections of their own. And when you combine a clever interconnected mesh of these intercontrolling circuits with sensors, actuators, inputs, and outputs, you have a computer. Computers are not just the type you see on PC gamers' desks. This tiny chip is an all-in-one computer, for example. So is this massive room that holds an IBM supercomputer. Any device that can perform computation of any scale is a computer. And since computers are all built off of transistors, and transistors exist in Minecraft, there's very little imaginable limit to what circuits could not be created within the game. Here's another example of a logic gate that exists in real life that can also be created in Minecraft. This is the Minecraft equivalent of an AND gate, 
the output of which is only one if both the inputs are one. When you look at it in Minecraft, it's very intuitive. The two inputs have redstone torches to them, which then activates a piece of redstone in the middle, and that piece of redstone deactivates the torch at the output. If, however, this was an electrical engineering class, teaching you about AND gates instead of a Minecraft example, there would be talk about silicon, oxide, semiconductive material, source gate, drain collector, base emitter. But with Minecraft? A few blocks, some torches, and some redstone dust. I have often complained in my other videos that it can be hard to learn things from people that are professionally trained in that thing, because their knowledge is at such a high level that it becomes difficult for them to convey that knowledge in a palatable way to the novice. The most amazing thing about redstone is that it has made two generations of young people well acquainted with the many principles of electrical engineering, without the necessity that they understand the minutia of the logistics and the principles and science behind it. I started playing Minecraft when I was 12. I remember being shocked when my dad, who's an electrical engineer, told me that AND gates were a real thing in real life. And I was even more shocked when I found out that they were ubiquitous in electronics, and I already understood at age 12 what they were. It didn't matter if I didn't understand the entirety of the physics and all the electrical engineering behind it, but I knew from a top-down level what it was. And this connection between my game and real-life engineering created an affinity for me for the field that I don't think would have existed otherwise, as I'm sure is the case for countless others. Even if they don't grow up to be electrical engineers, the principles of critical thinking, problem-solving, and creative building are invaluable, no matter what field one goes into. It's amazing that Redstone, and a lot of Minecraft in general, encourages young people to develop these skills in a way that they don't view as boring schoolwork or tedious education. It's my firm belief that people in general are much more capable of what they tell themselves they are, and no academic field is truly boring if you study and apply it. I don't think most young people actually hate the subjects they think they do. They just had a bad experience with a mediocre teacher, and that ruined that subject for them. Good games, however, just like good teachers, rekindle that fascination for learning, be it in kids or adults. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I worked really hard on it. This is my first real video that I've made since becoming a YouTube partner, so if you feel so inclined to send me some emeralds, you should be able to do that by clicking the thanks button in the bottom right of this video. For more content like this, feel free to check out my channel, and even if not, I hope you have a wonderful day.